Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated and today I'll show you how to save your Shopify orders into a Google spreadsheet document. We will start this scenario using a template and you can find the link to this template in the description of this video. So click on it and then go together with us. The first step will be to create new scenario from the template. And as you can see, we have two modules over here. So the next step here will be to add a new account. So you can change the name. And the next step would be to use the Shopify subdomain. So here we have a demo store, business automated at my Shopify. When you are pasting this domain over here, do not use the HTTP in the beginning because this will cause issues with the authentication. Just use the business automate. Uh, just use the pure name of your shop without anything in the front and then only what's uh, what's left here so you don't need that whole rest at the end so it's only the front in front of the shopify okay now let's click save and this will open another authentication dialog here you will see all the um, information that are required for this authorization nothing special over here just the regular data that is required for this application to work so what you need to do is click here install unlisted app it's coming from make so there's no worry about that so this way you have a new connection to your shopify store now the next thing will be to select the status in this case we will select open orders and then the financial status or the orders will be depending on the status that you would like to have we will select paid. So only the paid orders will be going through this integration. Open and let's continue. And what we can do is now decide whether we want to track the orders from now on, whether we want to track them from a specific date. You can select a specific date when you would like to start or whether you would like to have them all from the start of your store. We will use all because we had one test order that I have placed before. So we'll use it as a data for the next step. Okay, let's click OK over here. And now the next step will be similarly to collect it to your Google Sheet account. So also click Add and then click Save. And this will take the authorization with your Google Sheets. All right, as you see the new connection showing up, the next step will be to select the spreadsheet. We have already created a document here so we have selected a folder and inside of that folder we have created a document which is called my store orders and as you can see i have listed here some columns that i would like to see inside of that document mainly this is order id date status and some more details about the person that has ordered this as well as the details of the items inside of this order so Let's select this my store orders and we can search for it over here. So we'll do. Now we will select which of the sheets inside we'll use. We have only one, so it'll be sheet one. And now, as you can see, almost smart way, we have some of the data mapped with the corresponding column. So we will make some adjustments over here. So we'll put the proper payment status here. So we'll do status. And then this, it will be called financial status. And then status logistics, which is the fulfillment status. We'll also look for fulfillment status over here. And the customer name, we can keep it over here. So, all right, so let's click continue. And now you have created this from a, a template, but now we can go inside of the Google Sheet module and then we can adjust some of the documents here to update some of this to to match the details that you would like to see we will also add here the customer shipping address for so we will use here first name then we will use the last name then we'll take address one address two city zip province country okay so this is all the data that will be combine into a single into a single view and here additionally we wanted to have the city separately so we can search for it city and we can see shipping city here 
Also here, to be precise, here we put a customer name, but we could have two types of names. So we could have the name of the customer or we could have the name of the person that is receiving the shipping, since this could be a different people. As you can see, there is a customer first name and last name, and you also have the first name and the last name on the shipping address. But in this case, we are just using the name for the customer from the shipping address. All right. The next step will be the total value of the order. So let's put value total. So here in the total value, that's equivalent to the total price number of items the next step will be to count how many are the items we have in the order and the way we will know it is we will go to the line items here there is an array that contains all the line items that we have inside of uh, inside of the order we just want to know the quantity of line items so what we will do we'll use the following formula so we'll take the array and now we will use the map function and here you have instruction how to how to use it but basically we will map the first array and as the key we'll take the quantity so let's go back to the start and as you can see here there is a quantity so the raw name of this one is quantity so we will do the same thing so we'll write quantity and close the mapping this would return to us a simple array containing all the quantity of all the line items but we don't want the array we actually want to sum the quantity of all the line items across all the orders so the next step would be to use the sum function and we can either press it or we can just manually type it so we can do sum and then open the bracket and then close the brackets all right so this should return the sum of the quantity of the products that we have ordered and the next element would be to do line item details so we wanted to have all their names in a single column just for the information to know what were the line items that were connected over there so what we can do is go into this and similarly use a map function so what we'll do we'll use map and then take the line items then semicolon and what we we'll want to have here is the name so that we know what was ordered so we take the name but not actually pressing it from here we need to type the raw name of this variable so let's delete this and it will be called name and we will map over the names of the line items in this order but again, we want to see it as a test, so we will need to use one more function over here, which is join. So then we will go here and we can either press or type it. We can do join and semicolon here at the end and what we want to use to join it. And in this case, we'll just use regular comma and that's it. So that's pretty much everything. We can now press OK. And since we have selected to run all orders that we have it will run the first order that we have placed so let's press run once and as you can see this order has been found so this is all the data for that particular order and this order has been pushed into this particular um, google sheet so let's go back and see how does it look in, in google and what we see over here is is the order number is the date status the logistic status is empty so we need to check this why this one is empty the customer name the shipping address the name the total value of uh, of orders number of items and what was ordered over there we'll have to check whether this is correct this is the order that we have placed and this is correct we had one dog outfit inside together with the shipping so everything is fine what we are missing is only the order status right now when we have run this scenario once we will actually see whether there is any data inside of the fulfillment status so let's try this again let's type status as we can see there is actually no data available for the fulfillment status over there it means that this one is empty which is also similar to what we are seeing here so 
it looks like this one will not give us any additional information about the fulfillment status at this state when the order is placed. So that seems to be all fine. Let's try to place a bigger order to see whether we'll get the line items and multiple items over there. So let's go to the store. Let's add three of these. And let's add two of these. And let's quickly check out this order. All right, so you can see that this is the order over here. So we'll continue payment. I'm using a test store, so that's how I'll just put one. All right, the order has been placed. So let's see whether it will show up inside of uh, our new Shopify automation. Press run once. All right, so we have one order that was discovered. And here, yes, we can see that the total number of items across all of them were six. And you can see here, one by one, dog outfit, cat outfit, so all the items that we listed. You can also see here all the information about the, the order that was happening here and the value and so on. You can see that here some of the information seems to be glued together, but this can be solved very simply. So let's go back over here. And as you can see, there is a space at the end here. There is a space here, but the other ones are not having space. So we just need to do a space at the end of each one of them so that there is a bit of a gap between them. Okay. And if I press run once, nothing will happen because we don't have any orders. But what we can do, we can go to choose where to start and we can choose manually, for example, the last order. You can see the order number. Okay. So let's run it one more time. And here you go. So you can see right now we have that second order and there is a space between the names and so on. So that's a little bit easier too. Okay, so to change the date format, what we need to do is select the column over here and set the date format that we would like to see. So for example, this one, and now we would go back to the scenario. And now here at the date, we need to format the date. So we go into the date and time functions and we would select format date so format date uh, what we need to do is the first the date and then semicolon and then the date format so let's do it this way and let's do format as month month slash day day slash year 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 okay and let's run this video again choose where to start run once and as you can see, the date arrives in the normal format right now, and it's actual date, which we can change. So this would be a little bit more feasible. All right. So now to conclude this scenario, you could schedule this scenario to check for orders every time you want that sheet to be updated, which could be every 15 minutes, or it could be every day or every hour. So change this, turn it on, and then your scenario is ready to go. Alright, I hope the video was useful for you guys and if it was, please subscribe for more business automation videos. Thank you.